Hello and welcome to Star Citizen Sunday. This is a weekly show which covers all the news from Star Citizen from the week just past. I am your host, Mac, so let's get on with it. This week, we get information on the upcoming Invictus Free Fly Week, Theatres of War enters testing, plus we get to see the new shader system for ships. So before we begin, a big thank you to Timbol for becoming my latest patron and to Matt McMillan for becoming my latest channel member. Thank you both so much for the support. If you do enjoy my content and would like to make it even better, from as little as $1 a month, all the links are in the description below. Also, there is one day left for the Cloud Imperium sponsored Prowler Game Package giveaway. All of the links to how to enter are in the description below and keep your eyes out in today's video for the secret code. So Inside Star Citizen this week kicked off looking at the new shader system. They've been building their own shaders, which is called the Hard Surface Shader. Rather than using the default base shader and then bolting stuff onto that, they wanted to build something from the ground up which will allow them to create something that is perfect for Star Citizen. This allows them to build a suite of shaders that each serve a specific purpose. They can then just add new features as they need them rather than trying to bolt them onto a predetermined one. Some examples we got to see was the clear coat shader which kind of gives this nice glossy look iridescence and color shifting which actually looks phenomenal uh, painting ships and using various color schemes will be an option as well this is how we're likely going to be able to paint our own ships there'll be three areas you've got primary secondary and tertiary options and you'll be able to change the different colors and maybe even texture types that we have on them uh, and finally wear and tear was the other one that we got to see so degradation over time currently they are working on converting all of the ships to use these new shaders each patch, they will update as many ships as possible, but it won't be done in one go because there are obviously quite a lot of ships. Now, there will be a website post next week sometime explaining what this means for us, the players, which is sort of short term, near term. Uh, but this wear and tear is something that I'm super excited for and have been excited for a long time. Seeing our ships age over time will be so incredible and just sort of build that appreciation for them with you wanting to maintain them so they look their best, kind of making you care for your ship. Also, the shader will eventually be applied to all the items, all the weapons, the armors, the clothing, the buildings. So everything will have its own wear and tear, it'll degrade, it'll get older and again give you that sort of attachment to them. Very cool. The second part of Inside Star Citizen looked at the updates coming to prisons. Now obviously this is the first implementation of prisons for 3.9.1. They are focused on bug fixing as much as possible. They want to make sure that certain crimes don't put you in prison if they're not supposed to. Like if you get a misdemeanor, you shouldn't be waking up in prison. Uh, and also, they have seen people doing speedruns and escaping, and they want to make it a little more challenging. So they have blocked up a couple of pathways that they don't want players to take. But something to take into consideration regarding these speedruns. A lot of people are complaining that it shouldn't be so easy, but at the moment, there is no punishment to death. You can keep testing each escape path multiple times, dying over and over again, until you figure out the correct way to escape, and then do it in one go. Once they introduce the death of a spaceman and death has much deeper consequence, deciding to take a risky jump or not just to escape the prison may have you thinking twice. So do bear that in mind that just because it's easy now doesn't mean it's going to be a good choice in the future once they implement more deeper meanings to things. So coming to 3.10 for prisons, they want to have new ways to earn merits and new items to spend them on. The commissary will actually act as a prototype for the vending machines that we will see around the verse. So this will allow you to pick and choose an item you want, pay for it and then receive it. They also want to add missions to prisons to earn merits other than mining. So maybe, for example, a prison may have a job posting which requires someone to fix up an oxygen dispenser deep within the cave that's broken down. That'll give you a marker and then the first person to get that fixed will get some merits. Beyond 3.10, they want to have missions to make players want to go to prison, even lawful players. So maybe going into prison undercover for some reason, investigating something. They'll also expand prisons with new behind the scenes areas uh, as an extra step to escaping. I wonder if this means kind of like maybe engineering areas or staff only areas perhaps. Plus, they do want to introduce more legal and illegal ways to earn merits as well. Now, I find it quite interesting that although I don't intend 
on going to prison because I'm a lawful player. But if for some reason that I end up in prison, obviously this will be through no fault of my own, of course, uh, it'll be really exciting going there for the first time after all of these new updates are in and just seeing what I can get up to and feeling the vibe of the prisons, earning the merits and buying food and water and such. I think it'll be great, even though I don't think prisons will affect me too much because as I say, I won't be there that often. I just think it'll be quite interesting if I do end up there. Anyway, that was Inside Star Citizen. Let's move on. So this week's Star Citizen Live was with the level design team answering our questions. And the first question was, can we get signposts and maps in modular space stations? And they say, yes, they will be reworking the stations constantly as new tech comes available. They will use a tool that will automatically generate the signage for the space stations rather than having to hand place the signposts themselves. They're just waiting for those tools to become available. Next question, what is the long-term goals or additional plans for places like landing zones? Now, they said that they do think long-term when designing landing zones. For example, hospital buildings are already there in the landing zones reserved for when the medical gameplay comes in. Also, customs and security checkpoints are also fleshed out. They just need the functionality and gameplay to make them available to work. So they do think long term and they will expand the cities as they go. Uh, will we have ground transport between cities? They said yes and no. They don't have the tools to automate the building of these sort of transport locations, but they will likely do so in the future as they don't want to spend time hand placing everything. So if the tools come along for them, then they will use that. Will we see locations in places like Lawville that will allow us to work within cities? Now, I love this question. They say, yes, more things to do around landing zones is what they want as well. In some cities, there, there should be jobs available for you, like running errands for maybe Microtech Planetary Services. Or other examples, maybe if Hurston has a mine under the city, getting permission to go and work for Hurston, mining around Lawville. Now, I would really love this. I love the idea of maybe working at a dry dock as maybe an Argo pilot, loading and unloading cargo ships as they come and go. Let's hope that it gets to that point. Next question, what is the current status of the secondary locations in cities like suburbs? Now they plan to build from the smallest things like outposts to big cities and then everything in between like villages, towns and so on. They say it's too early to talk about them now, but planets won't just consist of one city and 12 outposts. They are going to expand things with a lot of points of interest. Will rooftops on Art Corp one day allow us to land and then travel down to Area 18? Now they say they're currently forcing people to land at customs to go through and then get scanned. But once that gameplay is actually in, they will begin to add backdoor entrances. So you could get into the cities without going through customs. And the same goes for the Lawville secret entrance. A while ago it was mentioned that there would be maybe an old tunnel or drainage vents that lead into the Lawville city and allow you to smuggle items in and out. Now they did start whiteboxing this, but they need the smuggling gameplay and customs functionality first, otherwise it would just be another entrance. So once that mechanic comes in, then they'll have other ways of accessing cities without having to go through the main landing zone. Uh, will we see the return of traffic at major landing zones? Now they say yes, they do plan for all locations to have various degrees of traffic. Will there be more hostile dungeon type areas in the future? Maybe larger or more complex than what we have so far. Now they say they are bringing in more points of interest like landing pads on buildings around Art Corp or New Babbage. Long term, they obviously want to have lots of points of interest like the landing pads on top of buildings maybe leading to a converted apartment block which serves as an illegal drugs lab and requires you to clear it out. Or maybe caves or underground facilities that will be expanded. Right now they're trying to create quantity more than variation. They're trying to get more content in rather than developing the depth for locations and such. But that will come eventually. Next question is kind of along the similar vein. So will there be more cave variations? Now there is a lot of cave content that they have prototyped like lava pools, lakes, ice caves, that sort of stuff. They've not implemented it yet, but it will come down the line. They just need more things like better traversal mechanics and obviously swimming as well. Also more hazard types like lava pools that will damage the player in some way. Now I'll show you in the background some of the ideas of ice caves and humid caves that we saw. They will also implement different various cave entry types, some of them large enough for ships, some of them large enough for just ground vehicles. Lots of variation will come. They get kind of started on this, but obviously, as they say, they want to expand the amount first and then work on the variation. Will there be anything to encourage the use of ground vehicles over ships? 
Now, as they add more to planets, that will help. Caves, which will be able to be driven into, for example, will encourage that kind of thing. But other options like weather effects, like electrical storms, grounding everything for maybe 500 kilometers, and the only way that you can get in is on foot or in a ground vehicle. Also, heavily fortified bases with a lot of anti-aircraft batteries, so you can't fly towards them. You need to approach on foot. Will we see other space stations other than cargo decks and so forth? And they say, yes, other than refineries, rest stops and cargo stations, there'll be manufacturing plants, security outposts, pirate hideouts, everything that they would have a gameplay element may become a space station as well. What density of content on a planet do you expect to reach? Now, they said they want some areas to be empty, obviously, for exploration or player expansion, but they do want to get to the point of hundreds of caves on a planet, for example, not just three or five that we have now. What considerations have you had for when the PU expands player counts? Now, they say they plan to build for the long term. Cities are expandable. Area 18 alleyways, for example, are expandable to add different areas. But also all the accommodation and the real estate is easily expandable. So they can just add more hangars, more habitation rooms and areas. They do plan on building out the current locations like the cities like Lawville, Area 18, Area 21, Area 17 and New Babbage and just expand on them as they go. Next question, food vending machines and arcade machines, will they have functionality? And they say yes. And we heard in Inside Star Citizen that they're prototyping this very thing with vending machines for the prison commissary. But also you will be able to buy these arcade machines and put them on your ship and play Hyper Vanguard Force or have a sim pod on board your ship and jump in and play a few rounds of theatres of war while you're quantum traveling. So yeah, they, the options are going to be there. Next question is, do you plan to add secret or unmapped locations in deep space? And they say yes, 100%. Will static locations have damage or degradation? Now they say there are plans to make wear and tear and damage states regardless of whether it's done hostile or non-hostile. Space stations will need power and life support and so on. They don't fake these items. They want them all to be interactable. And it also mentioned in the Squadron 42 report that some of the space stations will be having damage states applied to them. Personally, I don't know how much the player could damage or destroy a space station. I don't think they would give us that ability, but maybe depending on the type of space station, we could do it up, we could damage it or so on. Next question, roads, will we need them? They say yes, we will add them. They're just waiting for tools to allow them to do that without having to hand place everything. And the final question is, will Port Olisar be replaced? Now, Port Olisar will remain in the game some way or another, they say, but they just can't say clearly. I do now wonder if it will be destroyed. At first, I was very much thinking it wouldn't, but based on their reaction, I'm kind of swaying now 50 50 whether it will remain or whether they'll destroy port Olisar. let me know what you think in the comments anyway that was star citizen live not a lot of great new information we had there but it is clear that the team are developing a broad spectrum of content both planet side and in space and variations of locations and new locations and points of interest will come eventually as they continue to develop and create tools to allow them to do this quicker rather than hand placing everything Right now, it is all very limited and everything looks the same, but it will expand eventually. Anyway, let's move on. So also this week, a new Empire report is available talking about the final five Imperator candidates, helping you decide who you want to vote for. Squadron 42's monthly report is available on the RSI website now, but do not worry. I have covered this in a separate video, which I will link below. May subscriber flare has been highlighted. Plus, information on the Invictus Fleet Week has been released. This includes dates and information on what's going to be going on throughout the week. I have also covered this in a separate video. Again, it's linked in the description. And finally, over the weekend, they have begun the testing for Theatres of War. Now, this is just on Saturday and Sunday for three hours each day for the Eva Catties only. From what I have heard, without any spoilers or leaks, the experience is fun. But the game has too many issues at the moment, especially regarding performance to be wide open for the rest of us. This includes things like low FPS, desync, and so on. Hopefully these play sessions will help Cloud Imperium to get on top of these issues and resolve them. Do keep an eye out here on my YouTube for any leaked information as I cover the leaks as they happen. So keep your eyes peeled for that one. So that brings us to the end of the show. Thank you so much for watching. 
Be sure to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss a video. Hit that thumbs up if you enjoyed it and share the video with all your friends. If you like what I do and want to help me make it better, follow the link below to my Patreon page to learn more.